advertisement, mon français est très terrible. Ça va. Okay, with that being said, I brought home about 4,000 pictures and 30 hours of video. This is all whittled down, but this time I put it into chapters. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can skip ahead to the different chapters. All right. And this is pretty much a picture of everything we saw, which was a whole lot of art. Uh -huh. Some French cuisine. And we saw a palace, a tower, a pyramid. And I had a chance to drive, which was a lot of fun. And so here it is, France. And I have it in hell to her. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this was our first time using the Apple Air Tags, and we had them in the luggage. And when we got to Paris, this is what they said: we were about eight thousand kilometers away from our luggage. But when they came down the carousel and hooked up with the phone again, bang, with you, kind of cool. And Hotel Studio is where we stayed. You see, it was close to the museum and the catacombs, which is two of the places we're going to visit. So cool for us. Um, here's the face of the Hotel Studio and the closet for the elevator they had and we were way up on the fifth floor <laughs> yeah, so not the largest accommodations we both had our own single bed there was a shower to share and a toilet to share and this is what traditional france looks like with all the buildings and down here is where you're going to see the entrance to the train bus uh, type thing and um, this is where we come out later so remember that so anyway our first day of going out and seeing stuff, we ended up walking to the first exhibit, which was 40 minutes away, and that was a museum. And I'll let this guy take over now, and he'll tell you all about what we did. <laughs> all right, I'm vlogging the day of tourism one. We're off at the Louvre, and we have reservations for 11 o'clock. And these are the lineups to get into another lineup to get inside past security and stuff like that. So far, having fun, not enough coffee. <laughs> so, once you make it through security, you have three choices. The classics, the ancients, and the modern. We, of course, took the classics, which hardly anybody else did, as you can see. <laughs> and once you find the room, it's about a 15, 20 minute queue. You get up to the front, you get your selfie, and then you move along. And here she is, the Mona Lisa. Took 16 years out of Leonardo da Vinci's life, but that's not what I came to see. This Geracol, if that's the proper pronunciation, the Raft of the Medusa was what I came to see. The artist was a little bit of a lunatic himself, but he went to a sane asylum brought a severed head home, put it on his roof, watched it decay so he could paint the colors right. Now, I don't know if these stories are actually true, but apparently the second day of this raft being out at sea, they um, turned to cannibalism. Um, they, he actually had survivors in the painting. So the, these dudes that were in the painting were actually survivors and uh, ate the other passengers. So um, yeah, just bizarre stuff. And this guy looks like he's about to smash in the face of a reptile, but our new travel companion, Hugo, I think I had something to say about that. So a lot more statues and paintings to see. Uh, we covered as much as we could. I didn't even know the Venus de Milo was there, but we got to get pictures of her and the Sphinx and Lady Liberty leads the people. And I found it fascinating that these pictures had all these details and little things going on within them. And I passed by this guy and I just found this placid smile and blue eyes fascinating. I don't know the story behind him, but a lot of the statues here were headless, which was just bizarre. But you can see Shannon in the background. She's doing a little yoga and stretching her neck while I continued on through the museum. <laughs> It was endless, but uh, even now I can hear it. Hugo wants to go. Let's move on and find out what we did the next day, which was the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so when you visit Paris, you want to do the Eiffel Tower. That's just kind of like the landmark you got to see. So we ended up getting these um, summit tickets which was skip the line. So you see this uh, line queuing up. That's for the people that don't have tickets. The one next to it was us. 
with the skip the line ticket. So we got through pretty quick. So when you get to the front in the elevator, you get this sign, attention pickpockets and itinerant people hanging out trying to sell you fake um, Eiffel Towers but the lights don't work and stuff. So you take the elevator up to the first floor and then you go up to the second floor. You get to the second floor, you get out of your sardine can and you find the nearest staircase and you move up and that gets you to the elevator that takes you to the summit. Once at the summit, you get out of your sardine can and it's plexiglass paradise. <laughs> it doesn't look that good, eh, smudges. <laughs> One more staircase and then paradise. Here it is, c'est fantastique. The view of France from here is just amazing. You you have this gate up in front of you, but you can see through it. But uh, hard to find a spot with all the people up there. But when you do, you get your backdrop and you get your friend to take a picture and you say, hi. And that wasn't me. This is me. And that's the Arc de Triomphe behind me. And I took a lot of pictures. And here's a shadow of the Eiffel Tower and some part of the city. It's all rather cool. And then, you know, City of Love, Paris. And there's Shannon looking out at Paris. Gorgeous hair. And that's it. We had to come back down to reality, and that trip was done. So with our tickets, we actually had a cruise on the scene. So uh, we got on that. It was about an hour long, and more photographs, of course. People were waving at us. I mean, you point a camera at people, what do they do? They wave. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of things to take photographs of and Shannon got a good picture here you can see and uh, there's Hugo hanging out <laughs> now we I, we went by the Notre Dame here and I took a picture with my new Canon and I didn't even realize I got this good a picture from way far away but the gargoyles up here were amazing but Notre Dame is closed right now because of um, fire that it had and Hugo is going to take us into the next chapter now. Bye bye. <laughs> Time to eat. Escargot. Or green slime. <laughs> this is escargot? Yeah. <laughs> I think I found it. This is your brain on fish. Bottoms up. So I slowed it down here so you can actually see it going in. Now check out the eyes. Ah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Oh, taste buds just got hit. Woohoo! I'm telling you, they're absolutely delicious, but you're still wondering from the look of them. <laughs> so swallow with wine. The next place we visited had pigeon on the menu. These are frog legs. But I decided for the frog legs. Uh, do they look like little frogs? Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> very good. Bon appetit. Okay, can I... Tastes like pigeon. I mean chicken. All right, so French onion soup in an alleyway in France. What could be better? Okay, only one thing. French fondue, bread and cheese, maybe in an alleyway. <laughs> so lots of different food ideas that we went through and salads and then the clink of glass. Shannon heard it, so she had a glass of her own. And now the pastries in France were just over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but also in the morning, you could get baguette, panini, and pizza out of a machine. So our next trip is the Palace of Versailles, which honestly was a trip into the realm of opulence. I had never seen its equal and probably never will, but this is just amazing. And these are some of the pictures that I saw in statues. And here we are at the front gate. And here we are with a whole bunch of people. And here we are with Hugo's family. <laughs> yeah, some of their parties get out of hand. But there he goes. Now this certainly would have been better, but it didn't happen. But uh, this is what I refer to as the penguin walk. 
as you stuffed yourself from one room into the other, got to see just some amazing sights. Paintings in here, just way beyond the posters I had on my wall in my bedroom as a kid. The king's bedchamber. Sleep for the people looking at it. Ah, yeah. sleep. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? These are all the women that have been by the king's room. <laughs> Probably not. I'm just making that up. But who knows? Check this one out. I love to have clouds on my seat. That's just gorgeous. Next room, even more fabulous. I mean, I'm just thinking about like the work that went into this. It had to take a lot of time. And now check out this exit. It's got something in porcelain. I'm just going to see if I can skip the line on this one and see what's going on. I don't know what this guy's smiling about. Ah, la toilette. <laughs> and there she is, back on tour. And here I am as Napoleon, a famous fascist dictator. And now Josephine, uh, Shannon, and Phil. <laughs> now we're in the Hall of Mirrors, and I chose to film the ceiling. Is it, there were so many people on the floor, you just couldn't film anything down there, so <laughs> I chose the ceiling. And this is a little bit of what the exit looks like, but the roof at the exit was amazing because the characters were coming out of the frames. <laughs> I found it amazing. Uh, yeah. uh, here's another corridor. It just huge, huge paintings. I try to go slow here, but uh, hard to drink it all in and take too much time to show you all, but uh, just, I don't know, when you imagine the time it takes to create all of these and how long they've lasted, just amazing. So now we're in the gardens of the Palace of Versailles, and here's a ram's eye view of it all, and here is a gorgeous photograph I took. Way too many people. Hugo! Get rid of the people! Merci, Hugo! Montanon? Hugo, get rid of the boaters, too! And now we have no people, no boaters, Palace of Versailles. You're welcome. So they had these wonderful hedges here. Very haunting, very long. Different locations had different things at the end. And I thought, what goes on here at nighttime? But in the middle of these things were these little ponds with statues. It was very cool. You have no idea what you're going to see as you walk down these things. And they were filled with fish. So, visitors from Canada, en France, and the crow. <laughs> and a uh, seagull, I guess, on everybody's head. So here you get an idea, like, just how huge the place is. So this music started playing, and we went and saw this uh, water dance thing. I put my knee on the grass, and security got angry with me. <laughs> so I decided to check out other things. So we never did see this one spout off, but still got an awesome shot. So this is the exit to the Palace of Versailles. The place is huge. Awesome shot of my honey's hair. Salut à la king. Au revoir. Et maintenant, le métro. Um, we didn't know exactly how to get home, but we bought our tickets. We're pointed in the direction of column two. We got on the train, and this happened. So we've taken the RER, and we've gotten off at a station in a strange place. We are now heading for M10, which apparently is up these stairs, and on the other side. Trap.
Oh, it's fun. Look at the fun on her face. <laughs> so we did manage to figure out our way, which was across the street and down into a different subway. And then it was still fork in the road. Which way do we go? <laughs> we got down, found our train. And there's a little latch on these trains, didn't know about. And you gotta open the train with a little latch and it lets you out. And listen for the sigh of relief here. Freedom! <laughs> oh, I need a ticket to leave. I don't know where mine is anymore. Do we need a ticket to leave? No. No. <sighs> so if you remember from the beginning, these are the stairs that we showed you. And now we're at the top, and I finally got to record the sirens. But not one, we got two. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to be home. Man, were we happy. See, happy. <laughs> so tonight is the night that we get our rest because this is what we came to Paris to see. This was the high attraction, the bucket list. So if you're prone to nightmares, beware. Because now we're seeing the catacombs. For those of you who don't know what the catacombs are, they are a series of tunnels below Paris left behind by the stone quarries. The graveyards in Paris were overflowing and basement walls and ceilings were having cave-ins, so the bones were all delivered down to the catacombs, which now houses the remains of about six million people. So to get down to the catacombs, you have to go down about 130-odd stairs, and then you reach the bottom, and you head into these tunnel networks. So you cruise through these tunnels for a little while, and then uh, you end up getting to an opening, and you get some information, and then there's a sign there that reads, Arrête, c'est ici, Empire de la Mort which is, stop, you're about to enter the Empire of the Dead. So this is hard to see, but the ceiling's actually sinking down, so they built this column to support it. And I did a little 3D version of it so you can see what's going on there. Here, Shannon and I in front of it. And now, remember the 200 stairs to get down? <laughs> well, just as many to get back up. <laughs> So they only allow a certain size of camera bag, but camera bag gets checked on the way out just to make sure you're not taking any bones with you. So this chapter I've been looking forward to showing, a Canadian driving in France. So after four nights in Paris, we rented a car, which was an experience in itself, and headed for the coast of Mont Saint-Michel. Uh, full disclosure, I am a professional truck driver. I drive a semi for a living, so this was my response to driving with friends. People beware! So I've got my international driving license for this. We turn left, so it's the... Well, one thing about France is the intersections are huge. 
So you really rely on your GPS to get you there. In but... 200 meters, turn left onto Rue Glug. Rue Glug? So these intersections, you get to sit in the middle of them and try and figure out if you're going the right way or not. And you get way okay, too much time to contemplate. No. <laughs> okay, we're on opera, so that's where we're supposed to be. And in 200 meters. That wasn't for me. We're turning left here, I believe. Absolutely, we're turning left. I'm following that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm taking pictures. So if anybody has seen Chevy Chase's European vacation, you know this scene. This is the Arc de Triomphe, and they went round and round and round. It was kind of a bucket list thing for me to get on this thing and see what it was like. And so here it is. Arc de Triomphe. So it's a huge roundabout, no lines as you can see. Oh yeah, this is just a free for all. Okay. <laughs> and they come from Exit everywhere. Exit the roundabout onto Avenue de la Grande Armée. We will after we go round a few more times, not to worry. So this is about 10 a.m., 10.30, not prime time. So this does become gridlocked at times. Uh, you say wheels on the bus? So round and round. <laughs> know what's gonna happen but as it turned out today we're pretty uneventful traffic on both sides so now I'm in the inside lane and in a couple turnoffs I got to get to the outside lane I left the audio on so you can hear what's going on that one yeah let me know if it's if I'm going the right direction I can't, okay. I can't look down. I, yes, you're going the right direction, <laughs> but we didn't get any pictures of that. Your camera Continue was for wrong. one kilometer. It's so, the French use what I call a funnel system. Here I thought I was going left, and so I'm following these guys, and then turns oh. out light's red. He went How through it. I wasn't ready to go. Well, I guess we go around this way. So, as we're figuring this yes, out, I realize... Oh. That's where that I have to go though. straight I think I'm have to, get in there. to the right, but there's three lanes that have to funnel into I that. Need that van to clear because I don't know if there's a lane over there we gotta get into. <laughs> confusion? No, not confusion. It doesn't look like it. So now they clear. I put yes, my right sir. turn signal on. <laughs> Motorcycles can go anywhere. And now we all just funnel into a single road. That was scary. So far, TPS <laughs> is happy with you. Don't know if the drivers of France are happy with me. So life on the highway <laughs> is a <laughs> lot easier driving. Car, but toll booths come up. Two over there, cash. It's just easier to They don't explain it to you. I agree. You just show up and figure it out. Now we have information. Tap to pass. Here to the washroom, I noticed something a little peculiar. I'm going to show you. I guess all three can use those, but men have their own section. Ready for this? <laughs> He's outdoors. 
and that's for you know waiting I guess that's cool I'm reading 70 great correct yes yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> now it says 50 will be on the right. Yep, oh, turn here. There we go. This is our destination. Shim. Is that good? Cut them for heads. Yeah, yeah. Here it goes, I guess. <laughs> Woohoo! Grande! So this is where we stayed the night before we went to the Mont Saint Michel, and you can see it there in the background. And here's a quick look at the shared living room that we had at the place we stayed. We went out for dinner that night, and when we came back, my wife took a little walk, and this is what she saw. You could say she went out and shot some sheep. Try saying that one five times fast. Our next chapter will be Mont Saint Michel. I took this picture the night before. Just absolutely stunning. So, in the morning, you leave your car in the parking lot, you get in the lineup, you get on a bus, the bus takes you across the bridge to Mont Saint Michel. So, we finally arrived on this island. It does get surrounded by the ocean, and people do a pilgrimage here to see the church. There they go. And apparently you can't wash your feet, but I'll explain that later. Church is just gorgeous. This is a fortress. Lots of history. And now you're gonna see where we stayed for two nights. Right there. Okay, so there is tourism that goes on here and they sell a lot of things and gift stores and this is what the aisle looks like. It's tiny. And this is when it gets packed. <laughs> Nothing but people. To see the church at the top, you have to line up either with tickets, small lineup, without tickets, huge lineup, and the exit, whatever, trickle out. So this is the first viewpoint that you get to. As you can see, it's all ocean and it's out. But uh, this is a fortress. This is um, when the tide comes in before, in the early days, it was separated from the land. Now there's a bridge that comes over. But during the day, you can obviously go horseback riding, walk around and see all the different sites around. But um, there's something that goes on here, which is really kind of unique. But you see these crowds of people out here. They're all learning how to um, get out of quicksand. <laughs> The sand here has a lot of water in it, and a lot of people got sucked up into it. But, uh, yeah, when you come back from those tours, you still can't wash your feet. So now you can see the ocean's coming in, and we're getting surrounded, and nighttime will settle down on the city, and check this out. Okay, here comes Hugo, the sainted dragon of serpent protection. Way to go, Hugo! Oh, my God. 
this is actually the sunrise on our last morning there. Uh, we say goodbye to the fortress of Mont Saint-Michel. And now we're taking a we're shortcut. We're in the middle of Oklahoma. Somehow we got here from Paris. Well, you know how your GPS will uh, <laughs> take you on the fastest route. Whoopee! <laughs> it turned out to be a farmer's field. Roadway to Crows. I guess the Crows are telling me it's Please turn right after 250 meters at the stop sign on to the D404. No, that makes sense. So that was our little deviation. So Shannon and I usually work no, as a pretty right. good team when it comes to navigating Go, places. Girl, stop recording. And uh, on, on these occasions, the country was actually more difficult at times to figure out because the turns were less obvious. But uh, even in France, driving in the city was kind of, you watch what they do and, and you try to do the same thing yourself. We, we had four nights where we were taking cabs around and Ubers and stuff and watched how they did it. And the cab drive from the airport was such an eye opener. <laughs> so they drive like little uh, race cars and um, a left hand turn will have one lane and there'll be somebody beside the left-hand turn lane trying to get in and there'll be somebody beside him also trying to get in it's, it's just amazing how it works but um, as you can see these intersections are really hard to navigate and look how tiny these roadways are now I've sped this up a little bit just to get through it and not bore the heck out of you guys but uh, I just found it amazing going through here and it's like trying to find a parking spot I mean like they're just all snuggled in with each other the route has been changed oh. because of the current travel situation <laughs> no. please turn half right after 250 meters and then turn left and it got pretty frustrating at the end we had gotten back to where we thought the rental agency was and our uh, navigation device told us we were there but we couldn't see it so we kept on driving <laughs> and uh, yeah we had to do it again and uh, we finally made it obviously <laughs> but, uh, yeah hectic driving there it just comes at you from every which way but uh, it was fun Stop. I'll oh, do it again if I have nothing. to, but uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> you have reached your destination. Oh, au revoir, Mona Lisa. Goodbye, Eiffel Tower. Bye-bye, Palace of Versailles. See you later, Mont Saint-Michel. And, <laughs> and goodbye to the pastries and the good food. And we'll see you again, catacombs. So... Hugo decided to uh, come home with us. He couldn't ride inside the plane, so there he is outside. Hello, Hugo! Well, I'm pretty sure he'll be around. Might see him in the next video. <laughs> okay, so thanks for all your attention, and we'll see you next time.